Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Bear Ice. As promised, I am back with part two of my 2022 U.S. Nationals recap. If you missed the first one, the link is going to be above. In part one, I talked about the women. This is part two. We're going to be covering the men, the ice dance, and the pairs. So let's get into it. Switching over to the men's event, no surprise who the winner was here. Nathan Chin, first place in the short program, first place in the free skate. Short program was great. Free skate was not his best. He had a fall on a jump and a rather uh, funny fall on his choreographic sequence, which the internet has absolutely no chill. There are a ton of memes and, and pictures and everything from not only his outfit, which of course I, I am not a fan of Nathan's costumes. I really hope they can just come up with something nice for the Olympics, not just the shirt. I, I'm not a fan of the Hot Cheeto shirt. Whatever, he's still great. I, I enjoyed his skate, and even though he fell on his face, he got up, he laughed it off. Hey, six-time national champion, laugh your whole way to the bank, basically, with that one. So congrats to Nathan on that. Big surprise here, second place, Ilya Malinin. I have not heard of him. I do not follow the junior men. I only follow the junior women, so that's probably my fault. But he finished third in the short program here, had a fabulous free skate, Finished second in the free skate, which moved him up to second overall. Incredible skate. I, I'm 100% I'm sure this is who has next. Like, who's got next? Ilya definitely has next. Whenever Nathan decides to retire, I feel like Ilya could step in immediately and the U.S. would continue to have a man on the podium at Worlds. He is that good. His quads are gorgeous. He just rotates so quickly. So clean on the landings. I Somebody posted a video of him doing a quad-toe, quad-toe combination. Like, the guy is talented. He still needs work. He's He does not have the refinement of the edge, of the movement, or all that stuff. But that's fine. That stuff comes with more time. His base is fantastic, and I would bet money that this is a future world champion we're looking at. Unfortunately... You know, right now he's competing with a lack of experience. He does not have any senior international experience, and that is kind of costing him. We'll get to that in a minute. Coming in third here, Vincent Joe. He had a really good short program, came in second. His free skate, on the other hand, was a bit of a disaster, and I am really scratching my head as to where the technical caller was when, when Vincent was skating. I don't know if they went to get coffee they took a nap, a bathroom break, whatever it was. But the fact that Vincent went out and, I mean, you could visibly see the under rotations on the ice as he was skating. Not one under rotation. A few quarter turns here or there, but a quarter turn does not affect your base value. It only affects the GOE. Had he been called on the under rotations that he deserved, there's no way he would have finished in third place. This was a case of the judges 100% turning a blind eye to everything. It's not like he went out and had a great performance and just so happened to under-rotate stuff. He was shaky. He was stiff. He, he was visibly nervous out there. And I just, I don't understand the judges. I don't understand it. I don't understand the caller. I don't understand the judges. I don't understand the USFS's justification of having him finish where he finished. I'll get to that in a second. Coming in fourth, Jason Brown, gorgeous short program. Centerman is a piece of art. Just that is art on ice. Such an incredible program. He followed it up with a beautiful performance of his Schindler's List program. He went for a quad style to open, landed on the quarter turn, fell on it. Who cares? I didn't, by the time he was finished, I didn't remember any of the, I didn't remember it. I completely forgot that he fell on anything. He was stunning. There was so much emotion, gorgeous performance, and he ended up placing third overall in the free skate. Despite the fact that he only had one quad that he fell on, he still beat Vincent by over 11 points. It was very close between the two of them, less than a point, and they ended up giving it to Vincent. I completely wholeheartedly disagree with that. Jason should have been third. So the big question was, who gets named to the Olympic team? Obviously, Nathan is a shoe-in. He's a favorite for gold. He's going. He earned his spot. So now you've got Ilya Malinin, the new kid on the block, who does not have any international experience. 
You have Vincent Joe, who has lots of potential to score, has scored well, has placed on the you know world stage. He's a world medalist, um, not last year when he actually missed the, the free skate after performing so terribly in his short program. But, you know, he had a great showing at Skate America. He hasn't quite gotten back to where he was at that point, but he's there. And then you have Jason Brown, who has just been consistent over the past several years. He does not have the big jumps, but he has found a way to make himself relevant and keep himself relevant in the standings despite not having that. In addition to that, he has massive respect from the judges and can pull down program component scores to rival, you know, Yuzuru Hanyu. And he deserves it. He completely deserves it. He's an incredible skater. In the end, the judges ended up going with Nathan Chin for the team, Vincent Joe, and Jason Brown. Now, I have a problem with this because personally, I feel like Ilya Malinin should have been on the team. So the question is, well, who needs to get bumped off? Personally, I would have bumped off Vincent. That's just me. I, I feel like when it came down to it, Ilya went out there and performed. He's the future. I feel like the USFS should be investing in their future, and Ilya is the future. I think putting him in front of an international panel of judges on the Olympic stage would be a wonderful springboard for his career. But unfortunately, they didn't think that way. Obviously, they're going by quote-unquote criteria, and yet Vincent's complete choking at the world championships last year was not even included in that. And I'm being hard on Vincent, but I, I just feel like when it's as close as it was, I don't think he deserved to go. I really don't. I feel like Jason, he has proven himself to be a reliable skater. Vincent can be strong, but he can also implode as we saw. Ilya clearly is a strong skater and deserves that chance. I feel some kind of way about it. I'm very happy for Jason, 100%. I'm, I, I felt like he definitely deserved to go, and I felt like Ilya deserved to go too. So I don't know. Those are my personal thoughts. I, I thought Vincent should have been left off the team. Hopefully, Vincent will take this gift and make the most of it, because if he ends up going to Beijing and choking, I don't think he's ever going to hear the end of it. You know, the fact that he seizes up at big competitions, he got to get over that shit. Like, immediately. <laughs> Fans are going to eat him alive if he doesn't deliver, especially after bumping Malinin off the team. That's the way I look at it. Some people are like, Jason bumped Malinin off. No, I think Vincent did. Congrats to all the medalists. Congrats to the Olympic team. Fingers crossed, you know, Nathan will be able to deliver and can get on that podium. And hopefully Vincent and Jason can have strong skates as well. So best of luck to all of them. Moving on now to the ice dance competition. Congratulations to Madison Chalk and Evan Bates. They are the new national champions, placing first here, getting that gold medal. Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahue coming in second place with the silver medal. Full disclosure, and I've mentioned this before in previous videos, I do not know a lot about ice dancing in terms of the technical stuff. From my untrained eye, Chalk and Bates had the best rhythm dance. I thought their Billie Eilish program and have thought all season, it's one of the best ones out there. Hubble and Donahue's program is good, but it doesn't capture my attention as much. Also, I was able to see the error that they had. I think it was on the Twizzle sequence, Madison... I think had three turns instead of four, which dropped the level down and they, they lost a lot of points there. And I think pretty much that is what made the difference between first and second place. I thought Chalk and Bates free skate was great. Um, I definitely think they got away with that last lift at the end. You could tell when she went to place her foot, didn't quite get where she needed to get it. And then I know that final hold, the lift, he's supposed to have her up under her arms and she was basically just kind of hanging on his back. Um, if I didn't know that, I probably wouldn't have realized that it was a mistake and they disguised it well enough and the rest of the program was wonderful. So I'm, I, I'm happy with it. Um, I do agree that Hubble and Donahue probably had the better free skate, um, or free dance for this competition. So I agree with them winning there, but unfortunately it wasn't enough for them to catch up. So they ended up second, Chalk and Bates in first place. Really happy for Caitlin Hawaiik and Jean-Luc Baker. I'm a big fan of theirs. Um, they first pulled me in with their disco program about two seasons ago, and I just thought they were stunning here. Uh, they had issues in the rhythm dance as well, 
and ended up finishing fourth there, but were able to come back, finish third here, and get that third spot. Carolyn Green and Michael Parsons finishing fourth here. I am such a huge fan of their free dance. I love contemporary dance. I love modern dance, just dance in general. And I thought it was just, so, it's so unique. It's such a unique free dance and they were beautiful. I am really happy that Hawaiik and Baker are going to get to go. Um, I think they've earned it. I feel like Green and Parsons are going to be that team that steps up. I think Hubble and Donahue, this was supposedly their last competition for the Nationals. So I'm, I'm assuming they're probably retiring at the end of this season. Green and Parsons definitely have next. I feel like they're going to be, you know, that team that steps in to keep the U.S. dance team strong. So excited for them, happy for them. The U.S. has three spots in the ice dance competition. So Madison Chalk and Evan Bates, Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahue, and Caitlin Hawaiik and Jean-Luc Baker are going to be the three teams representing the U.S. Carolyn Green and Michael Parsons are the alternates. Fingers crossed nobody gets sick and everybody who was selected to compete gets to compete. So congratulations to all the medalists and to the new Beijing team and cannot wait to watch them compete at the Olympics. Finally, we have the pairs team, Ashley Kane Gribble and Timothy LeDuc. I mean, they were ready here. I think that is just the best way to put it. I mean, she was so laser focused in that free skate. I mean, I was like, there is no way in hell they're missing anything. It was beautiful. I, I love the two of them. I think they have such an interesting vocabulary of movement. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Timothy is is very flexible and he has nice extension too. And I, I remember Ashley Kane when she was a, a single skater. So it's great to see her finding so much success as a pair skater. And the two of them together are just strong skaters individually. So when you put them together, you have a really strong team so excited to see them come out and nail it and, and win that title. So congratulations to both of them. Jessica Callalang and Brian Johnson also had two great performances here. Um, it wasn't quite what they needed in the free skate uh, to, to catch Kane Gribble and LeDuc, but I don't think anybody could have. Let's just be honest, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but I enjoyed them as well. Alexa Kinnearum and Brandon Frazier ended up having to withdraw due to COVID. But um, like Alyssa, they have been named to the team along with Ashley Kane Gribble and Timothy LaDuke. They are, both of those two teams will comprise our Olympic team for the pairs competition. Jessica Cowling and Brian Johnson are the alternate. Congratulations to the medalists. Uh, bronze going to Audrey Liu and Misha Mitrofanov. So... Congrats to them as well. Uh, congrats to the medalists and congrats to the Beijing team. And like everybody else, looking forward to seeing them in Beijing at the Olympics. And so that will pretty much wrap up the 2022 U.S. National Championships. Again, congrats to all the medalists. Congrats to all of those who made the team. Congrats to the alternates. Stay ready. We might need you. It's going to be an, an interesting couple of weeks heading into uh, Beijing. That is for damn sure. <laughs> As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. We've got a lot more skating coming up heading into the Olympics. It's going to be pretty crazy. So make sure you check back soon. Okay, bye.